Well, today's lecture, we're back at the Science Cave, and we're going to talk a little bit about volcanoes. Uh, this is a picture of Mount St. Helens when it was erupting, and uh, we're going to look at a couple different things, talk about what affects the viscosity. Viscosity is uh, the resistance to flow. Uh, you might have heard of like uh, 10W40, uh, 5W30 for, for uh, motor oil. Well, viscosity is temperature dependent. Higher temps mean lower viscosity. And magma viscosity is related to the silica content. And we know about the silicates, the most abundant uh, mineral group in the Earth's crust. And so the more silica magma has on it, the higher the viscosity, or the more, uh, more thick it is, if you want to think like that. Also, factors that uh, affect erup eruptions are to dissolve gases. The gases that can be trapped in magma are water, carbon dioxide, and when these start getting into trapped into uh, into volcanoes, you can get some very explosive volcanoes. The higher the viscosity, the harder it is for these gases to get out, and when they do come out, it's with a big explosion on there. Uh, these next couple slides here, we're going to look at uh, some volcanic material, some material like you know lava flows type stuff. Uh, this is a picture of the uh, Snake River Plain in, in Idaho, and I uh, was actually out there on a, a field study. And this is called Aa, -A. and you can see this material is rough, jagged blocks, and it's not real smooth. And this would be high viscosity material. And this is Aa. -A. The next one is called uh, Pehoehoe, and this is Crater of the Moon National Monument in Idaho. And Pehoehoe is a little more viscous, and it comes out in twisted braids and ropes. And uh, you can see it almost flows out like uh, you were pouring batter out of a cake pan. Uh, these are some of the other pyro, they're called pyroclastic materials. Uh, you can read those for yourself. If you ever watch any of the uh, volcano movies, you know, people are getting killed by all these blocks and everything falling down. And uh, these are what those things look like. Uh, the next picture we have here is a volcano diagram. And a volcano diagram, we have the pipe, or the vent here, if you will, and it goes through the, uh, the center of the volcano. And this allows the magma to escape from the Earth's interior. The vent of the volcano, as it goes through here, and it you know, gets to the top here, and all this lava can come out of here. Uh, you can see the other layers here. Uh, we have a crater, which is typically the uh, the top of the uh, of the volcano, and in this diagram here, you can see the gases, uh, the ashes, and the cinders. Uh, many of these gases, uh, sulfur dioxide, you know, that the smell of rotten eggs, and these vents here, you know, they're connected to these magma that's in, in the interior of the Earth's surface here, and it gets through fissures and cracks, and it can work its way out here. Uh, we're going to look at a couple different types of uh, volcanoes here. And this one here is a shield cone. And this is uh, in the big island of Hawaii. Uh, these are very fluid, which means they have very low viscosity. Uh, they're mafic. And if you remember back when we talked about minerals, mafic has a lot of uh, magnesium and iron, so they're dark. So they're rich in magnesium. Uh, they have what is called a, that broad dome structure. Hence the term shield. They, they look like a shield. And uh, these are typically found in hot spots which rise deep from the ocean. And a little bit later in <clears throat> another week or so, we're going to take a look at uh, really the Hawaiian Islands and the hot spot that they run over. Uh, this one is a uh, cinder cone. This is a sunset crater up in uh, Flagstaff, Arizona. And uh, you know you can see some trees here and stuff. And this is a very gas-rich basaltic magma. So again, somewhat dark. Uh, these are fairly small in size, you know, maybe a couple hundred meters or so. And their eruptions really don't last too long at all. And this, you know, I've had a chance to walk up some of these, and it's almost like walking in a, a very, very coarse sand. Uh, here's a picture of a. Comp Oh, you know, of a composite cone, and these are your classic ones that you think of uh, when you have uh, 
eruptions and this will be Pompeii you know the, the classic eruption there whoops wrong button and here we've got uh, another picture here of uh, what's called pyroclastic flows which come out of these different types of volcanoes especially the uh, the classic composite cones a classic volcano shape uh, also are known as stress and many of these are located on the ring of fire and that ring of fire if you remember you know surrounds the Pacific Ocean these are uh, silica rich magmas they're felsic lighter in color and it's somewhat grayish and uh, these are the ones that are really compose <clears throat> a lot of dangers on here uh, these pyroclastic flows are hot gases uh, they can be a lot of ash rock fragments and uh, these gases combined with snows produce <clears throat> mud flows are called lahars and these can travel upwards of 200 kilometers per hour and in Mount St. Helens that's what killed killed a lot of people is when you these gases combined with the snow form these mudslides and these mudslides just ran down the side of the mountain uh, this is uh, Mount St. Helens and this is your classic well before it erupted anyways this would have been your classic uh, composite or strato volcano that's the one you always you know think of when you you know they always have the uh, the pictures at the end of the world the bit large volcanoes exploding and those are the strato volcanoes and here's a uh, I guess a top well, I should say I guess it's a top-down view of uh, Mount St. Helens and this is uh, off Google Earth here and you can see here's the Mount St. Helens and this is the side it blew out here and these would be the lahars and the, the more the mudslides flew down at. Uh, next one I want to talk about is a, what a caldera and a caldera is a depression a well, very large depression in a volcano and it's actually the collapse cone of a composite over a shield volcano not many people know that the much of Yellowstone National Park is a very large cone of a volcano and Yellowstone uh, Lake is here uh, many of the hot spots are here and the Yellowstone National Park is, is really a volcano that's waiting to explode and we're going to look at that a little bit later also but this would be a caldera the collapse of a composite or a shield volcano and this would be the cone that actually collapses in on itself uh, this is another caldera here the, this is a crater lake in Oregon uh, I have not had the opportunity to get out here but this was an ancient volcano and uh, those, you know the rock solidifies in there and it fills up with water and uh, very picturesque spot uh, pretty famous you know again it's the uh, it is the caldera of a volcano uh, this is a uh, this is a volcanic neck and this is Devil's Tower Wyoming I had a chance to go out here a few times um, this is would be the volcano and that the magma flows to the surface and solidifies and over time this material along the side starts to erode away but this is actually the neck or the vent if you will of this very very large volcano uh, interesting spot around here it's uh, sacred to the Native Americans uh, they filmed uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind here there's a campground not too far from here where you can uh, they show it every night during the summer camped here a couple times with a group of kids I think I was abducted by aliens twice and uh, this is a very sacred area to the uh, the Native Americans there's certain times of years as you're walking up you can do a hike area around here uh, that the Native Americans have their prayer flags there and so this is a a very sacred spot to them Yellowstone rivers not too far from here uh, if you get time in classroom remind me to tell you a story about this place it's kind of interesting uh, these types types of places also in, especially in South America can be diamond bearing you know you talk about the the diamond mines of uh, South America the beers diamonds and so forth 
Uh, this is another interesting place here. And this is uh, Shiprock, New Mexico. And this is the ancient vent, if you will, of a ancient volcano that has withstand the, uh, the weathering. And here you can see all these different pipes that would come off from the main volcano and they're you know they're fairly solid you know you're talking about you know a very tough rock doesn't weather very easily so this volcano here at one time would would have reached out very far away out here uh, the name comes from it looked like a a ship uh, when people were traveling cross country back in the uh, the wagon days and hence the name uh, ship rock New Mexico This is a uh, lava plot plateau, uh, the Columbia out in the Pacific Northwest. And this is just magma from fissures, very, very low viscosity, uh, and just started piling up, piling up, piling up. You know, this can be several hundred feet high, and this is all very, very dark material, so it'd be mafic. And uh, nothing real eruptive here, but what you had is all this lava just going to the surface and just just flowing out and forming a plateau, a large flat area. Well, this is a fairly short uh, lecture on, on volcanoes, and we're going to look at some of these uh, when we get into Google Earth and so forth. So uh, we will talk to you later.